In the 2018 T-Mobile data breach, an attacker gained access to millions of T-Mobile customer records by exploiting a vulnerability in the third-party API that T-Mobile used. The vulnerability was caused by a misconfigured cross-origin resource policy that allowed a domain or any domain to access the API resources. The attacker used this vulnerability to steal customer data, including names, date of birth, social security numbers, and other sensitive information. This incident highlights the importance of configuring CORS policies carefully. And that's what we are going to talk about in this video. But first, let's understand what same origin policy is. The same origin policy is a security feature built into web browsers that prevent web pages from making requests to a different domain than the one that served the page. This is important because it prevents malicious websites from making requests to steal sensitive data or perform unauthorized actions on behalf of the other user. Let's say, for example, if you are logged into your bank account and while browsing, you also visit a different website. Now, the same origin policy will prevent that website from making requests to your bank servers to steal your information or perform transactions on your behalf. So, same origin policy only allows requests from the same domain and doesn't allow requests from a different domain. And this is good from a security point of view. But sometimes, we need to use an API to retrieve information from a different domain. In that case, we can add some exceptions, right? And that's where CORS comes in. Cross-origin resource sharing is another security feature that allows a web page from one domain or origin to access resources from another domain. So with the help of CORS, we can enable web pages to interact with APIs hosted on different domain. To enable CORS, the server must include the following HTTP headers in the response of the browser request. Access Control Allow Origin header specifies which domains are allowed to access the resources. If the header is set to star symbol, then any domain is allowed to access a resource. Otherwise, the header must be specific to domain or list of domains. Another one is access control allow methods. This header specifies which HTTP requests are allowed for the requested resources. Then comes access control allow header. This specifies which HTTP headers are allowed for the requested resources. An example of CORS in action would be a web page hosted on domain A making a request to an API hosted on domain B. Without CORS, this request would be blocked by the browser's same origin policy as we saw earlier. However, if the API on domain B has been configured to allow request from domain A, then the request will be allowed to proceed and the web page will be able to access the API resources. Okay, for practical demonstration, we are going to use a CORS lab from Portsvigar. We will explore how an attacker can steal another user's API key due to misconfigured cross-origin resource sharing implementation. Here, I'm going to turn on my proxy and click on my account. There, I'll provide the credentials Weiner and Peter to log in. Here we can see we are provided with an API key. So this is making a request when we log into the account. I'm going to click on my account again and see what requests are generated behind the scenes in Burp Suite. So this request with the slash account details path is an interesting one. When we send the request, we can see the username, email, and an API key. So basically, this domain is trying to fetch this information from a different domain. And we can also see another header in the response that is access control allow credentials, which is set to true. This header is basically allowing us to fetch credentials from a different domain. I'm going to test something out. I'm going to inject another header in the request, origin, and I'm going to set the value to a random domain that doesn't even exist, example.com. Send the request, and in the response, we can see another header is added, which is access control allow origin, and it contains a value that we provided in the request. So the value that we provided is being reflected in the response. Because if we didn't allow it, we shouldn't be able to see the username and API keys in the response. 
Okay, so now we know that the CURS is not configured correctly. Now how an attacker can exploit it? In this lab, the above button go to exploit server is the attacker server. Basically, an attacker will host his own domain. And here we can craft a response. So basically in the body section, I'm going to paste a malicious JavaScript code. This JavaScript code will make an XML HTTP request to the specified URL, which is the vulnerable URL, and retrieve the account details from the endpoint. The HTTP method is get, and the URL is the lab ID. The third parameter that is true indicates that the request should be asynchronous. And by setting with credentials to true, the code enables sending credentials such as cookies or HTTP authentication with, with the XML HTTP request. This is only possible if the server allows it by sending the appropriate CURS headers. And since we already saw the access control allow credential header was set to true, we should be able to retrieve all those information through this JavaScript code. If the victim clicks the link, the JavaScript code will automatically send the request from the victim's behalf. And now I'm going to check my access log. And there we can see an interesting log with the username administrator and the administrator API key. So it is encoded. I'm going to simply copy it, paste it in the burp decoder get rid of this last part and then click on smart decode and there we can see the data in clear format username administrator and the api key this was possible simply because the api server was not verifying who can make the request and retrieve the information so how you can avoid this kind of situation you can configure the access control allow origin header to limit which domains can access the resources. Use a whitelist approach rather than allowing all domains with a wildcard. You can use the access control allow credential header to control whether credentials such as cookies or HTTP authentication can be included in a cross origin request. Only allow authenticated requests from trusted domains. Use access control allow methods header to limit which HTTP method are allowed for each resource. Only allow the necessary methods for each resource. Keep the CURS policy as restrictive as possible to limit the attack surface and reduce the risk of vulnerabilities. You can also validate all the incoming requests on the server side to ensure that they are coming from the trusted domains and contain valid data. Okay, so that's all for this video. I hope you learned something new. Thanks for watching and don't forget to like and subscribe.